Elon Musk's SpaceX Starlink versus China's killer satellites. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. I'm coming to the end of some misty morning. So that bergamot is so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking space, SpaceX, Starlink, and of course some Linux. A lot of good tech on this channel. So today we're going to be talking about China and their janitor satellites with robotic arms that are not there to take out the trash or what we expect them to do as janitor satellites. They are there to circumvent our systems, to be able to take out our satellites if need be. And I was reading a few articles about this. I want to share it with you because they're going a little bit further with this whole entire proposition. They're launching a lot of these satellites, not just a few, and the things that they're able to do are kind of interesting. This proximity stuff that they've been working on for quite some time is seriously working. And just the last week, I think it was, just two weeks ago, I think, I was talking to you guys about how there was a Chinese satellite that literally pulled behind another satellite. It wasn't our nation's, it was another country's, I don't remember which one. And now it is behind it and catching up to it. What is it gonna do once it catches up to that satellite? I don't know. But this is the kind of stuff that's been happening. They've already proven that they can go up to a satellite with one of their arms and kind of throw it off course if they want to. They've done that with a dead satellite and it works. So that means that they'll be able to do it with live satellites too, if need be. So there is this space race going on and it's not really as it used to be in the 80s as a space race. Now it's becoming a satellite race, AI race, robotic satellite race, that type of thing. It's very, very interesting to me. I wanna know what you guys think about this. I'll give you all the information, the facts that I know as of today, and then I wanna hear from you. What do you think about this? What should we do about it as a nation? What should we do? Is this something that we should be worried about or should we not worry about it at all? So before we get into this article, I wanna say that if you enjoy the content, throw it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. If you are, thank you, I appreciate that. Click this notification button over here so when I go live, when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And if you want to give back to the channel, there's a little thanks button over here. You could click on that, give a dollar or two if you want. If not, it's perfectly fine. The video is still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you haven't stopped by my website as of yet, jchristina.com, check it out. Go over to the shop. If there's some merch there that you like, pick it up. Help support me and my family. I would appreciate that. And Finally, if you want more SpaceX Starlink content, I've put together over 500 videos so far for you. I'll put a link here, don't click on it yet. When you're done watching this video, click over there and you'll find a whole bunch of helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, and of course the why behind all of it, because as I always say, this channel is about the what, the why. So let's jump right into this article. And then once again, I want to hear from you down below. If you're shy, you don't want to put something down there, put an emoji. At least I know that you watched the video. That would be very, very helpful. I would appreciate that. Debris cleanup or satellite sabotage. Some Chinese satellites are labeled as space cleaning tools designed to remove debris, but that's only part of the story. These satellites have robotic arms, arms that could grab, disable, or relocate the working satellites of rival nations. Imagine setting a janitor into orbit, but one trained in martial arts. Peaceful on paper, but fully capable of striking if ordered. Golden Dome, America's sky shield. To counter the rising threat, the United States is deploying Golden Dome, a space-based defense system focused on early warning and interception. It starts with hundreds of high-resolution sensor satellites to form a digital shield around Earth. Their mission? Constant surveillance of the orbital battlefield. There's the key words, orbital battlefield. Things are changing, guys. Things are changing. The interceptors, the satellites that actually destroy threats, won't arrive for some years. For now, the first wave acts more like guardians than warriors. These fast-deploying orbital sentries will monitor movement, protect key U.S. assets, and lay the groundwork for rapid response. Starshield and the SpaceX Arsenal. 
Assisting in this space shield is SpaceX, already launching a new class of defense-ready satellites called Star Shield. These units aren't your everyday Starlink satellites. Over 118 are currently in orbit, designed to secure military communications, real-time threat detection, and encrypted data flow. SpaceX is also introducing a quote subscription model for rapid satellite deployment, giving the US military the ability to request and launch new units quickly without months of planning. That's important, very important. The rise of orbital guard dogs. China's approach is more physical. It's now testing AI-powered satellites built to patrol and defend national assets like its space station. These satellites can move towards unknown objects and physically push them away. In contrast, the US is focusing on digital countermeasures. Up-and-coming Guardian-class satellites may use electromagnetic interference, decoys, and even laser deterrence. Pew, pew. Some prototypes already feature clever shielding and visual tricks designed to confuse enemy systems. So while one side is building robotic bouncers, the other is deploying high-tech sentries. The countdown has already begun. The first wave of Golden Dome sensor satellites is expected to launch by 2026, with live testing planned for 2028. Meanwhile, SpaceX's Star Shield constellation has grown to over 100 active satellites and continues to expand. China is rapidly increasing its own satellite fleet, raising serious concerns about the militarization of space traffic. At the same time, the U.S. is cutting funding for critical space traffic safety systems, ironically, just as the orbital environment becomes more contested and dangerous. Space isn't just the final frontier anymore, it's quickly becoming the next battlefield. Once again, battlefield, that is so, so important. I I think wars are going to be won and lost in space in the future because the amount of things that you can do from space is absolutely unbelievable, unbelievable. And we're going to rely on space more and more and more as time goes by, either for surveillance or for active kinetic attacks. That's just the way it's going to be. Now, Elon Musk said this, Starlink needs to be a civilian network, not participate in combat. Star Shield will be owned by the US government and controlled by the DOD Space Force. This is the right order of things. So Elon Musk knows that this is going to be the next battlefield. And instead of getting involved with it using Starlink, he's saying, hey, I'm pushing it over to the DOD or the Department of Defense. I'm giving them their star shield, which is basically star links, but militarized, however you want to look at it, and they can do what they do. So this way it pulls me out of the picture. I like that a lot. He stated this, I think, at the end of last year because people were giving him a whole bunch of shit about it, and this is just a smart thing to do. Now, in my personal opinion, when I look at this, I say, you know, this is really interesting on where SpaceX is going with this, because it is my understanding that they received $1.8 billion contract from the NRO, I think that's the National Reconnaissance Office, to create these reconnaissance satellites. And those reconnaissance satellites are exactly what they're talking about in this article, if you know it or not. So they've already received this 1.8 billion, let's call it $2 billion contract for these satellites. They are part of that Star Shield satellite system, the constellation. Those satellites are Guardian class sentries. Now remember, I talked about this in a previous video. Before they go into this Golden Dome thing, they are going to have to deploy, or they said they're going to deploy, these Guardian class Sentry satellites first. They are basically the, let's say, the sentries, the guards, the bouncers, like China has, that will monitor and guard their assets, which would be the interceptor satellites, the ones that actually do the kinetic, let's say, pew pew, 
of possible intercontinental ballistic missiles and whatnot. So they need to have a system of protecting them because without that, it's pretty much useless, right? So they're deploying those first. That's what this $2 billion is going towards, is these Guardian class sentries. So that's really good to see. Now, what do these things do? Well, they're not only just going to guard, they also do the secure or encrypted communications between satellites, okay? This is very, very important. Military grade, not just Starlink grade. Starlink's pretty damn good because it's been in the military. We don't need to talk about that in Ukraine and everything. And Russia's been trying to hack it continuously every single day for the last couple of years. So trust me, Starlink is pretty damn hard, but the military grade supposedly will be harder. Also, it's doing the real-time tracking and reconnaissance, what it's there for. Basically putting together a node or a mesh around the planet that is watching everything. And since there's many of them, they can use that for triangulation to see exactly where, let's say, an ICBM has been launched. What is its trajectory? It's very easy to figure that out when you're bouncing data between multiple nodes, right? Once again, to triangulate the location, its speed, velocity, where it's going. And finally, it has this ability to create create that mesh network that the interceptors won't. These things are going to be, let's say, the eyes. It will be the equivalent to, let's say, a ground crew. Let's say in the military, that are launching a laser-guided missile. You need to have someone on the ground that's pointing, all right? That laser, where this thing is going to go. This has happened for many, many years. And once that thing is locked in, they can then launch the missile and the missile will guide itself right into that laser target. This is the kind of thing that these Guardian class sentries will be doing. It will be doing the targeting. It will be doing the monitoring. It will be, once again, that mesh network of blanket or blanketing of the entire planet so they know exactly what's coming in and out of the atmosphere. You know, when I was reading about this, I found that China has been over and over and over through their state-based media, they've been saying this thing where they talk about the militarization of space and how the US is doing it and that's what's forcing them to do what they're doing. It's like, not really. Not really, they've been doing this where they've been doing this uh, pulling up behind satellites, coming up to satellites, doing this type of thing for quite some time now. And at this point, we're like, well, we need to have some type of countermeasures. We can't just have one of China's satellites pull up to one of our military satellites and then dismantle it or push it off its trajectory or pull it back into the atmosphere to kill it. You know, there's a lot of things that it can do kinetically by having a robotic arm on one of these satellites, okay? And they are dispensable. So they can just put a bomb on it, boom, and that's the end of the satellite. Or once again, just simply pull it back into the atmosphere and let it burn up. That's not really hard to do and it's pretty cheap if you think about it. So there needs to be countermeasures and that's what these centuries that we're putting up there are going to be able to do. Monitor as well as be those bouncers or kinetically move the Chinese satellites out of the way if need be. You know, the political dynamics on all this is a problem in my personal opinion. The whole spat between Elon Musk and the president has just been, I don't know, just bad press and it's just bad for the country. It's just bad all the way around. I think it's stupid, but it is what it is. Elon Musk now is looking at possibly losing $22 billion of government contracts. So I think that's a problem because remember, SpaceX and the government they are pretty close to one and the same. And when I say that, it's a symbiotic relationship. Without one, you don't have the other, so to speak. All right, follow me here. It's very loosely in terms of what I'm saying. But when one is doing well, the other one is doing well. One is relying on the other and the other is relying on the other. Elon Musk is relying on the government for money because obviously he wants to get to Mars. There's a lot of things that he wants to do and he needs money to be able to do it. SpaceX Starlink is giving them a lot of money, but the government government will give them a ton on the back side of that, which is very important. On the other side, the government really needs SpaceX because who the hell else do they have? No one. No one. Who's going to be able to do all of this stuff? ULA, Arian Space, who are they going to rely on? Maybe Jeff Bezos and his garbage? They're not. There's no one out there besides SpaceX that can do what SpaceX does. 
period, end of story. If there was, all right, but there isn't. There is no competition. So once again, it's a symbiotic relationship. They need to get their shit straight instead of sitting there and feuding. It's about the nation. It's not about individuals or just one entity. It's about us as a people to stay safe, in my personal opinion. What say you? What do you think about all this? What do you think about the SpaceX Starlink and their Star Shield? What do you think about these Century satellites that they're putting out there before Golden Dome comes online? What is it, 2026, 2028, somewhere on there when they start doing testing? What do you think about that? And what do you think about all of the proximity tests that China has been doing over the last year plus, where they literally will pull up next to a satellite, a satellite that's working or not working, and physically maneuver it, physically touch it, all right? And like I said now, like a week ago or two, there is now a Chinese satellite that is pacing or outpacing, actually pulling up to another satellite. I'm not sure which nation it is. Maybe you guys can do the research down below in the comments. Let me know. But they are doing that. Now, once they pull up to the satellite, what are they going to do? Who knows? So these are the kind of things that we need to ask ourselves and what type of threat is there coming in from China? And is this now basically the next war, the war in space? Like I said before, I personally think majority of wars will be won in space in the future. That's just simply how it is. You can either like it or not. And a lot of the kinetic things that happen Pew, pew, is going to happen from space, not necessarily from the ground. You're just not going to see it, and it's going to happen. So anyways, guys, I want to know what say you down below. Once again, if you don't want to put anything down there because you're shy, put an emoji. I would love that. And like I said before, if you enjoy the content, throw it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, family, colleagues, Reddit, Facebook, wherever you frequent. That would be awesome. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected. We'll see you in the next one. Love you guys.